Welcome to Take the Lead Radio with Dr. Diane Hamilton, where she interviews some of the most successful leaders, entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, and other individuals who will inspire you to take the lead in your career and personal life. And now, here is Dr. Diane Hamilton. I am here with Shotoko Ayumede, who's a young Nigerian developer who started his professional career at the age of 11. He's defied all odds that state that developers are created by age and experience. This young man has been in the tech industry for more than six years and has been programming with multiple programming languages for the web, software, bots, and artificial intelligence. As of 2018, he started working as a software developer at the number one tech news publishing platform in Nigeria named TechPoint.ng. At age 16, he was the youngest developer in Lagos, Nigeria. He plans to defy all odds again and gain enough experience and knowledge regarding entrepreneurship to start a company of his dream. And this dream is just something simple, an institution where everyone knows how to code and get a perfect job after learning with his institution. So it's so nice to have you here. Thank you. Same here. All the I'm way laughing. to Nigeria. And can you say your, la your full name for everybody in the right way to say it, please? Okay, hi guys. Um by a meeting from Nigeria. I, it's very um, unusual that I, I do shows in Nigeria. So I'm very interested in what, what you do. And you're very young. Now, how old are you now? I'm 16. I'm going to 17 um, June. Okay, so you're 16, nearly 17. And yeah. you started developing at age 11, which is very young. What, <laughs> <laughs> what led to your interest in that? Um, it's really a long story, but I'll cut this short. Okay, um, first of all, at primary school, I learned um, Microsoft Word, um, CorelDRAW, that's designing. So GS1, that's, I actually said, there's something better in, in the IT industry, so I actually had to go to, into programming. So that's how I all started. My uncle helped out, so many people helped out, but finally, none of them could actually help us along the way. I had to sit down and use Google and other online software that I could use, like W3 schools, Zoya points and all. That's what I ha just have to use to just move forward. I moved forward two years, three years. At a point, I actually stopped. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it got, say again. Yeah. Keep going. It got so, yeah, it got so tough that um, learning was Learning with school at the same time was just hard. It was very hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to stop and focus on education. So um, I focused on my education for like, um, let's say, two to three months. Then someone else inspired me again. Said, well, programming is really, wow, is this, is that. Like, they inspired me and I said, I'm going to pick this up again. I picked this up again and since then, I haven't stopped. And I can't stop. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I, you know, I did a little bit of uh, programming in, when I was very young, probably not much older than you. And back then, oh, we programmed in BASIC. <laughs> it's been a while. And yeah. we, they made us program oh, our homework in BASIC. So I had to take calculus in college and program how to do the homework in BASIC. It was horrible. And I'd get stuck in nested loops and all kinds of crazy, you know, I mean, I just go around and around. I never got out. But I wasn't meant for programming, but I, I understand the difficulty of it. And I understand that what you've done is pretty amazing. Um, now, is, you. is, well, you're welcome. And it, I'm curious, is it, um, what is the tech industry like in Nigeria? Is it like what we see here in the United States? You may not even know the answer to that, but I'm curious if you do. Yeah. Mm, I might not have the direct answer, but I have an answer. Um, the tech industry in Nigeria, it has so many aspects. Um, nowadays, so many people are going into software development, the AI industry, the um, AI industry, cryptocurrency, um, blockchain, and all. So many people are all going into all aspects of tech in Nigeria, and it's actually working well, but we have more groceries in, in the aspects of um, Software development and there's a company over here you must, might have heard it called Andela, right? Yeah, say that again. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Andela. Uh huh. So you're. Yeah. Go ahead. 
It's a tech company in Nigeria that employs software developers to actually become world-class software developers in Nigeria. It's all, all over the world. They have a branch in Nigeria, Uganda, San Francisco, and New York. So they help employ, they pay software developers, junior software developers, to actually teach them and give them free internet access, lights, and everything they need to become world-class developers here in Nigeria. Nigeria, oh. Nigeria um, CEOs are actually putting effort to actually build up um, software developers here in Nigeria. There are so many CEOs in Nigeria that, um, okay, yes, this new company in Nigeria called Faith Code 54, my favorite thing to do is code. Yeah. The software development country, so, um, sorry, organization in Nigeria, that, um, their aim is to teach 5,000 Nigerians to program, to, um, 5,000 Nigerians to learn to program a software here in Nigeria. But um, it was going so well that um, investors came, they invested so straight up, he moved to Silicon Valley. So now, as of today, he has empowered more than 3,000 Nigerians to learn software development over there in California. Well, are, you, are you wanting to move over the, to Silicon Valley or are you happy staying in Nigeria? Um, mm -hmm. I would love to Silicon Valley. That's a very good question. You, I would love to stay. <laughs> like to go Everyone. to Silicon? Yeah. My, my son-in-law works at Apple. And, uh, I, I might, and yeah, he's a engineer and, you know, it's really fascinating to me when I get to go to Apple because it's, um, it feels like you're at a university. I mean, it more than a comp than a company, they have kind of like a big place where everybody eats lunch and kind of reminds me of when I was in a university here and, um, it's a lot of fun, but, uh, I think that, you know, I meet a lot of people like you who've done amazing things in other countries and then maybe they come to America to have other, you know, opportunities. Uh, I had um, Roya Maboob is a very famous woman who was on my show who created a software company for women in Afghanistan to teach them how to, to learn how to uh, understand the internet to be able to work online. Now you're trying to come up with a company that kind of reminds me of that kind of thing. You're trying to help people you know, with your company, what's your goal for your company? Um, yeah, Nigeria is actually doing a good job by um, creating software developers here in Nigeria. They are doing a good job, but they can't actually reach every part of the country. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. So that I decided to create an extension in my own aspect. That's in the way I live. So my own extension to teach software development in my area because, um, way I say, um, they don't really regard, you actually, they don't regard websites, mobile applications, software. Yeah, they would love to do it, but they don't have the resources. They love to learn it, but they don't have resources. So because um, if you want to learn, okay, let's say you want to learn software development on W3 schools um, and to get a verified certificate, it's kind of expensive. I think that is $99. Okay, $99. And, People here in Nigeria might not want to pay that kind of amount because they don't really have it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of much. So I'm just trying to create a solution where it's easy, it is cheap to learn software development. At least we are going to empower our country to actually build world-class developers. Um, a list came out um, middle last year of top um, countries with, the software, with good software developers in the world. I, Nigeria came up number 20, with China number one, USA number two, and Russia number three. So we are still gonna strive, try our best to just- You wanna move up that list, right? <laughs> right? You wanna get a little higher on that list. And I understand that, but how are you going to fund this company? I mean, how are you creating this? Firstly, um, bootstrapping. That's, That's it? That's what I'm That's go fun. for now. Um, uh -huh. So I'm actually going to work for some time get enough money, then actually fund this. I have other guys working with me with this, and they're also working to actually push this project forward. So the, now that I'm presently, I'm actually working at a company named Setpoint.ng in Nigeria. Um, the other guys, the co-founder and the software developers and the graphic designer, they are also working in various companies here in Nigeria to actually get enough money to actually fund this business of mine. Because we actually have the same vision of where this is going. 
So have you looked at crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter or anything like that to... Um... Yeah, mm -hmm. I have. The one I actually looked at was Y Combinator. Mm -hmm. so I've been taking a look at them for some time now, but um, a company cannot just give us funding without us actually putting an effort. Mm -hmm. So we have to put our efforts first and actually build this thing into a level before we can actually speak for investment. So have you been on any other news shows? I mean, I know you contacted me and I don't know, how, how'd you find me, by the way? <laughs> I've always, was, we've talked a little bit back and forth, but I was curious how you found me. Okay, very simple, Google. Oh, uh, Google, and what did you Google to find me? I'm curious, what uh, uh, news uh, I can't really remember. Yeah, that's so funny because I'm always curious how people find me because, especially in other countries, you know, because it's pretty yeah, easy. To know here. Yeah, and I have people from other countries that I've interviewed across, you know, across the globe, and it's always interesting to see the different dynamic of what it takes to run a company in each country. It's it's very unique, and you're very young to have done this. But I get a lot of young people on my show that have been on um, the Forbes 30 Under 30 list. Have you ever heard of that list, Forbes Magazine? has a yeah every month. And it, you, know, you get that every month oh they'll be happy to know that um so <laughs> you, you know it's a really prestigious list of people who have found ways to change you know either the world or the, the you know based on what they're trying to do um in the industry um how are you getting on the radar other than of course being on my show uh have you have what other shows or what other uh what other exposure are you getting for your company right now? Um, presently, currently, we are currently working on how to actually, how the business is going to look like and how, it's going to, how we are actually going to run it. Because the main thing about a business, building a business, is actually the planning stage. That's something you're not supposed to be rushing. Right. Because if you actually rush it, um, I guess in two to three years' time, you'll be crashing. That's just the fucking truth. So we are actually taking our time to actually build this company stage by stage. Well, you know, I've taught more than a thousand business courses and you obviously have done some good research because you do, you want the foundation, you want to have your plan, you have, you've got to have your goals and you got to have measurable, right? So it sounds like uh, you're doing exactly what I teach my students to do, which is great to hear. Um, <laughs> Do you have, how many people, uh, do you have any other partners? Or are you doing this? You said we before, so is there, are, do you have partners? Yeah. How many? I have other partners. Um, okay. I have a co-founder called, his name is Precious E.B. Mm -hmm. He's a graphic designer and a visionary. Mm -hmm. So presently he's working alongside with me and other team members that try to fund this business. Not just both of us, the other two guys and a software engineer and a graphic designer. So presently we have two software group and two graphic designers. So we are all working um, to get enough funding to push this business to market. At least by the end of this year, we should kickstart. Start kickstart so what's your competition like? I mean, is there, who, have you really done research on that? Well, yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, the competition, well, they are really tough ones. Tough okay. ones. How will you cool. differentiate yours from theirs? Sorry? How will you differentiate? How will you be different from them? How, how are you going to make your company better than what's out there? It's actually our approach. Most companies are first teaching by, um, yeah, you have the money. Okay, let's see. I found a website online. I can't remember the URL. To learn HTML. They were asking for, um, I think, 150K. In Naira, that's like 150. Mm -hmm. And that's not normal. People are actually going to pay that, but it's just the top guys. Mm -hmm. but who, I'm actually focused on those guys that can't really um, get enough money to pay that kind of amount. People that um, they just have little, but they can actually try to come up a little bit, then actually invest in their knowledge. Um, I have a mentor. She said something. Um, she said, um, Okay, I had this thing. I actually wanted to learn uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, advanced Microsoft PowerPoint. Um, I told her if she could recommend a free course for me. She was like, um, free courses are never complete. And that's true. So she told me some said, invest in your knowledge because that's something no man can ever take away from you. 
And since then, man, I've been investing because no man can ever take away your knowledge <laughs> as a thing. Right. You just have to keep on investing, investing and search Google a lot, a lot because there's no information in this world you cannot get on Google. That's the plain truth. There's yeah, no it's information amazing. you can't get on Google. Uh-huh. <laughs> Right. I, I know. And, you know, it, but I think a lot of people need to help having it focused for them. And it sounds like you're going to help people learn what they need to learn by focusing it more. Right. And yes. so uh, I, I, I'm curious, um, you know, I met with Steve Wozniak. I got to meet him when he was in town and he, cause he was a, you know, the founder of Apple co-founder with Steve jobs. And he, yeah. he started at WazU, which is a university. They, he's doing here out of Arizona where I live. And so he's trying to do that kind of same thing where, you know, you're, you're educating people in smaller pieces than if you wanted to take a full four year college degree, for example, which is kind of what you're doing. Right. So, yeah. so how long does it take them to, to get the knowledge of what they need to get out into the working world? How long is your program going to be for people? Is it very based on what courses they take or is it, or do you have a certain format? I'm curious how it's going to look. Um, it's based on the course. Okay, we, we started a bit, so I'll just give you a bit of information on the courses. First of all, um, web development is a two-month course. Mm-hmm. Two-month core course. We are actually going to learn core web development in two months. Once they are done, we are actually going to push them to actually work in companies as interns. Mm-hmm. We've got that figured out already. Well, okay, so now that you've got this, you have to write these courses. And writing courses, I've written a lot of courses, and curriculum development's kind of tough, you know? I mean, you could be a great person at knowing something, but then actually putting it into courses right. is a challenge. Are you doing that yourself, or are you going to hire somebody else to do that? I can do that by myself. Because yeah. um, the founder, you must actually know everything about your company. Um, where I work presently, um, Taekwondo NG, the man says something, the CEO says something, Sadi Wali is too, he says something. He said, while he started um, Taekwondo NG, he was the graphic designer, he was the web developer, he was the writer, he was the video editor, he was everything. So I believe as a CEO, you must be, actually understand every branch, every aspect of the business you are trying to go into. It's, it's challenging when there's so many aspects to a business. And I, I have to give you credit for being so young and trying to grasp so many areas. Uh, what do your parents think of you doing this? Oh, my parents, they approve. Okay, <laughs> at first, they didn't have to approve because they were like, um, I just keep on learning, 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 learning. But nothing's <laughs> it for it. Like, they want to see the money. <laughs> yeah. They're like, first. They're like, you've been learning for over how many years now? You're not actually getting something. I, when I started, I tried it enough, like seriously, a, a lot of free jobs. Uh-huh. Someone comes to me, the website, I created for you for free. For free, for free, for free. Because oh, another mentor of mine says something. I have a lot of mentors, a lot. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> how, 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 did you, how did you pick your mentors? Um, okay, this one is actually... Um, I met him at an event I hosted. I actually host events. Um, I'm one of the coordinators at Facebook Developer Circle Lagos. It's a program that is a worldwide program. We have a branch in Lagos, a startup discovery. So he came to speak one day and I said, This man, he knows a lot. This man, you are with me. <laughs> I was attached to him. I said, I cannot let you go. I cannot. Oh, I texted him, what? emailed him, called him. Oh, man. You are tenacious. That, I like that quality. I mean, you really know what you want and you go after it, right? Yeah. How did you develop that quality? That I, I'm writing a book about curiosity and you're obviously a very curious person. How did you get that quality? Did your parents uh, tell you to do certain things like ask a lot of questions or did you just come naturally to you or how do you think you got to be like this? Um, first of all, when I asked outside of as a developer, yeah, I was learning. I could not actually speak free. I was just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> not much. Um, but as time went on, I knew I, I just have to talk. If you don't talk, no one's going to open your mouth and talk. You might, some people actually go to church every day, sit in church, put on nice dresses, everything, put on makeup, not knowing they have problems. 
Mm-hmm. I don't stress it. I tell you, okay, presently, let's say um, I need money to fund my school. Right. And I can sit down and like, I still say, I see you're my mentor and I tell you, sir, um, this is what's happening with me. I need funding for my school. Please, can you help me out? If you don't actually open your mouth to actually request for something, it's not all the time someone just come and give it to you. So you just have to be um, curious to know that um, if I ask this man for this thing, will he actually give me? Mm-hmm. That's the question. When you, you can't just assume. If you assume, you might be wrong, you might be right. No one knows. Well, I like that you're not afraid to ask, and I like that uh, you're, you're trying to do something that really helps other people in your, your country and to, to develop. And um, um, I think a lot of people kind of are really curious of what you're, you know, how can they help you if they want to find out more, and how can they reach you if they want to know about what you're doing? Okay, um, if they actually want to know about what I'm doing, um, just reach me by email. Uh, Shodipovi at gmail.com. Shodipovi, S H O D I P O V I at gmail.com. That's my email. You can switch me over there. Then I'll try my best to respond immediately. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> well, is there anything else that you'd like to share about your company or ideas? You've got everybody's attention here. I, uh, I wanted to make sure because I know you wanted to talk about this. And I want to make sure I asked you everything. What else? Is there anything else I didn't ask you that you want people to know about what you're doing? Okay, now let me take a step backwards. The aspect of programming. Before a man can actually become a developer or something great in life, you must actually take your time to develop yourself. The six years I took back, I took my time. People are trying to say, oh, bro, you're getting old. You're looking much older. You don't play. You don't do this. Don't. I tell them, I have to sit and I try to develop myself because Mark Zuckerberg is presently said five years old. And yeah, he has to take six billion USD. At age 19, he found a Facebook. At age 13, Mark Zuckerberg founded Zucknet. He was, he was a software in basic. Before he can actually found Zucknet, he, must actually, he has taken his time to actually develop himself, sit down and learn this. He didn't actually run up and down. He sat down. He knew, he knew that there were no shortcuts to success. He sat down. He watched video tutorials. He read books on how we can actually go further. So actually go further, um, he must read books. That's one thing I discovered recently. That was 2017. Mm-hmm. Must read books. Like, seriously, must read books. Yeah, I read articles. I read tutorials. I study tutorials. Um, but books, if I try, I'm going to slip off. That was before. I was 2017. I knew that. Um, so actually push forward. You must actually read books. Because there are some things that um, someone cannot even tell you. There are some things you don't find in articles. There are some things you don't just um, research and just see. There are some things that are just written in books. You just have to read it. Okay, like the book you write on curiosity. I'm so curious to read it also. <laughs> so I'll be expecting the PDF. <laughs> well, I love how much you uh, uh, love to read. And I like this whole um, conversation of how curious you are. And I think this has been really fascinating. And I can say when you become the next Mark Zuckerberg, I'll, I'll tell everybody, yep, he was on my show. So I'm really looking forward to that day. <laughs> okay. It was yeah, so great. Cool. To have you on the show. Thank you so much. Same here. Nice. Nice being here.